Today's Colt's birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. So I made him a special breakfast. This is pork feet. They're cut in half back here. Then there's chicken hearts, chicken feet, it's pork liver and beef kidney, a chicken egg, a quail egg, a rack of pork ribs, and a piece of tongue and a pike mackerel. Then I added, uh, which I do occasionally, is extra virgin olive oil. Some of the cloudy stuff down there is apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. That's coconut oil and local honey. It's a big meal. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear sweet cold. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Forgot to add some Greek yogurt for him. Amen. Wow, it's really windy out here. We're going to the store now to get some special treats for Colt. Um, I'll bring you along and show you what we find and what we get. Um, it's something I've been planning on doing, but we're not gonna do his birthday until Sunday, I think. And uh, Colt is actually not vested right now because it's his birthday. He doesn't need to be, so we're gonna go in and get some things for him. So we got a few good things here. Some duck wings and feet and some chicken feet and the two tubs of chicken hearts so far. So I added some pork snouts and then some pork ears and some pork ears sliced up. Yummy, huh? So I think I found some others that I want. Some beef liver, some pork liver,
we've definitely found even more than we needed. I'm super excited to get started on this for Colt. Thankfully, um, we postponed the actual celebration part of Colt's birthday till Sunday because it's in the middle of the week, Garrett works, and I didn't have my surprises ready yet. So it's best to just do it on Sunday when Garrett has it off and we can do the whole celebration together. Um, but of course he's gonna be like spoiled for like a month, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter what day it is. Um, but yeah, so we're super excited for doing this and I will show you guys what I'm gonna do. It's a successful trip. We're uh, headed out now. So I know we're probably gonna get a lot of questions. Um, I was thinking about it, about Colt not being in a vest. It's 100% legal for him not to be in a vest. Sometimes I just don't feel good enough to put him in a vest. Sometimes I forget it. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's too hot, the weather, or like special occasions like this. He's, we're just making one stop and they all know us personally because this is where I buy majority of his raw food. Um, and you know, I wanted to just not have to vest him and use my smart crutches. And so he, I didn't need the help of a pull strap or a bracing or anything on his harness. The vest, it's like a common misconception that the vest means like the dog is working. And I know some dogs are trained that way where um, if the vest wasn't on, the dog is playing and stuff. And then the vest, if it was on, that they're serious. But that's not how it works with all dogs. Like Colt works off, uh, I mean Colt work, like he'll still alert when he's off duty playing or whatever. Um, and he'll also be able to just turn into work mode even if he doesn't have a vest on or not. So like if we're, um, you know, I forgot his vest or something and then I went to the store, you know, you should, you should just be able to go into the store like everybody else whether you have a vest or not basically like you shouldn't have some kind of stipulations where just because you have a service dog you have to have the vest on and all this stuff it would be very hard on a handler just in case they forgot it i mean they'd have to go all the way back home and get a vest and stuff so there's reasons to not be in vest and he doesn't act any different when he's not in vest and everybody knows him here so it's not really a big deal most of the time it's easier for a handler to have a vest on just because people won't pet him if it says don't pet well they still do but they'll <laughs> hopefully some of them will at least read it that says do not pet and um you know with people with mobility issues sometimes they need it because it helps so just like that with me i most of the time need it um but since I have other uh, equipment that I can use to help myself, then that's just how it can be sometimes if I wanna take him out of the vest. So here's a haul of what we got. Some pork liver, some beef liver, some pork ears sliced up, some other pork ears, some pork kidney, pork snouts, two of those, well, two packages, pork tail, Chicken feet, duck feet, chicken hearts. And I did get some Pacific mackerel and some whole chickens. Those are just extra for meals. The And the rest of this, I think, well, the pork tails are extra snacks. And pork snouts, some will be extra snacks. Some of them I may dehydrate which is what I'm planning on doing. So what I'm planning on doing is dehydrating a bunch of different things for him. Um, normally I only do a few select things that I do dehydrated like home treats. So this will be an experience and kind of a new thing to do um, because I've, I've picked a bunch of different things to try. And so I'll bring you guys along on that and I hope you enjoy um, watching and that maybe it gives you idea for treats for your dog um, but since it's Colt's birthday I just wanted to really spoil him um, he's turning five so it's kind of like a big birthday and he's you know he's right in the, his prime years and I'm very thankful for him and so he gets all the treats in the world 
So far I have two layers of hearts, chicken hearts, evenly spaced out. Now I have two layers of pig ear slices, pieces basically, and then the two layers of chicken hearts here, and I'm going to stick a few bigger things in the oven now. Now I'm going to put these in the oven, there's some chicken feet, some full pig ears, some duck feet, and some hearts. Um, I just want to see how much time it takes in the dehydrator versus the oven with the chicken hearts. So I'm going to put these in and see how it goes. So I have a whole sheet of chicken feet going into the oven and a whole sheet of liver. The right half is beef liver and the left half is pork liver. And I have a mostly a whole layer of beef liver in the dehydrator, some extra pieces of ear as well. Um, I'm going to see what the difference is between the oven and the dehydrator. That's why I want to put a little bit of each in both. The bigger things all go in the oven though because they're thicker and they take a lot more heat to dehydrate. Guys, it's raining and hailing! I love it! doesn't really care though. But we're waiting to go in and get something to eat because we don't want to have to run in the hail. It'll hurt. it got better. It's still not better. We got like totally drenched and it was really cold because there's hail. Cole thought it was funny. took it off the other yucky foil I'm putting it on a new piece of foil one side of it is done and the other side's not so I just flipped all the pieces over put them on here to help them dehydrate more since liver is so liquidy it's best to uh, flip it over to make it go quicker but it's already pretty much like a beef jerky consistency on one side and then the other side is just a little bit wet so only a little bit longer for the liver pieces okay so now I flipped over the chicken hearts and everything on this tray so this is the side that hasn't been done yet and that's the side that has so as you can see it doesn't look oily or wet or anything um, the ones that have a lot of liquid in them, sometimes you just want to flip them over and get them on a new sheet of foil so that they can be out of the liquid as much as possible. So I flipped over these duck feet 
which are almost completely done. As you can see, there's only a little bit of liquid coming out of them on, on the side that was underneath. And these chicken feet look like they need longer than the duck feet do because they're uh, meatier, have a lot more liquid in there. And then some of these really thick, like this is just an extra piece of ear, pig ear, um, is very fat, so it's gonna take a while, probably overnight. These uh, are thicker too. So the ends, the tip of the ear will be done before the ends are. So I flipped everything over and I will put it back in. I flipped over all these chicken feet as well. There's a whole sheet of chicken feet, a whole sheet of liver. One is beef liver and one is pork liver. And then up there, there's some hearts, the duck feet, the pork ears and some chicken feet as well. And Colt is impatiently waiting. Check on the dehydrator. There's chicken hearts up here that look pretty dry. And because they're not on a flat sheet of foil, I don't really need to flip them over. As you can tell, they're dry pretty much all the way around. There's two layers of chicken hearts. Let me lift this and get back to the other layers. And these are the pig ear pieces. Some of them are looking pretty good. Like this piece is almost done completely. So this dehydrator works really well because it's ventilated being on racking instead of being flat on foil. And I was testing to see how the liver would do. It does look like it's making more of a mess than it would in the oven. It kind of looks like it's dripping through in some places, but it does look like it might be drier. It might take just as long as the oven. Um, could be, if they were bigger pieces, it could be less messy. I was just testing that out because I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. Um, but they're still usable for the dog and it'll just be a little more mess to clean up. But it does look like I may want to use the dehydrator for the liver because you didn't get to see the foil before I took the pieces off that were in the oven, but it was definitely a disaster mess of all the liquid pooling around it. And I'm looking down in the dehydrator and it actually doesn't look that messy. Maybe a couple drips here and there. Um, so this actually looks like it did better than the oven because it's more aerated being on a rack. So maybe I'll do this from now on, but I'll just have to do bigger pieces because the smaller pieces look like they sunk through and the ones that were thinner pieces look like they um, stuck a little bit like right here. So we'll see how that goes, but it will all still be usable. I just wanted to see what was faster or easier. Um, and so I hope this is helping you guys. Uh, so far it's probably been about six no maybe five hours four or five hours um that they've been dehydrating so the smaller the item the quicker it will dehydrate um and that's why i put the pig ears and the feet inside the oven just because they need more heat for longer and in this dehydrator i don't think it could handle that thick of meat like this is a pretty big piece that's why i put these down here is to test them out and to see how well they'll do um but I just think that the oven is the more the option for the bigger things because they're looking really good. And um, I don't think that this dehydrator can handle that thick of items. But for easy things like chicken hearts and pieces of liver and the pick ear pieces, it seems to be doing great. So I'll keep you guys updated. So I did actually decide to flip these over. As you can tell, the like great pattern on them. 
Um, first of all, I realized that um, how much they were kind of hugging the grate would actually make it really hard to get them out once they did dry all the way. Um, maybe they would get brittle and break into even smaller pieces. Maybe they'd just be stuck. So I decided to flip them over now, which was actually pretty easy because they were still a little bit soft. So here you can see, you know, it's still pretty soft, but this whole side right here is dehydrated. Um, so just flip them over to see if that helps at all. Um, flip these big pieces over too. And I did notice that these pieces of liver near um, these big pieces of meat, they are less dehydrated than the rest, which I'm guessing because it's taking so much effort to try and dehydrate the big pieces of meat. So we'll see how it goes. So I'm pretty much too exhausted to keep doing the stuff that I'm doing today. So I'm gonna just go to bed and probably leave the stuff dehydrating overnight. There are some things I'll pull out before I go to bed, um, but some of the bigger things need to be dehydrated for a lot longer. I'm not sure if I should set an alarm for the middle of the night or what, because I've never actually ran into this issue before because I normally start it earlier in the day and don't have to leave it overnight. So we'll see what happens. I don't think anything happens with it because once it's like dehydrated, it just kind of sits there, I think, because there's nothing else it can do. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I'm too tired to really even think right now. <laughs> so I'm just going to end the vlog and tell you guys that I love you and thank you for all the birthday wishes for Colt. You guys have been so sweet and he had a great birthday. We're going to do the actual celebration on Sunday, though. So if you want to send him something to the P.O. Box for his birthday, you can do so. There is a P.O. Box in the description below, plus links for wish lists on Amazon. There's a wish list for treats, a wish list for toys, and a wish list for other stuff. And so if you wanted to send him something for his birthday, um, I got requested for that a lot. So... That would be really great and sweet. I'm going to do a couple different opening videos. I already know a lot of people have sent stuff and are planning on sending stuff. So thank you so much, guys. That means a lot to us. It really helps us out. And Colt needs to be spoiled because I love him so much. And I hope you guys do too. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And join the family for more adventures with a traumatic brain injury and a service dog and just being part of our lives and our family and we love having you guys here thank you so much and i will talk to you later